Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Blood Phantom 81 Today I'm going to be talking about five hot stock picks. The first two are going to be about growth stocks and the last three are going to be about dividend growth stocks. PPC Ian recently made a video talking about his hot stock picks. Obviously his are going to be focused on solely dividend growth investing, but being the kind of investor that I am and I'm just looking for good opportunities, whether they're dividend growth or whether they're high dividend or whether they're growth, it doesn't really matter to me. So being the kind of investor that I am, I like to talk about all different types of investing. And so yeah, that's going to be the basis of this video. So let's just jump right into the hot stock picks. So the first stock on the list is Nvidia. And so obviously the first thing that jumps out at you if you're looking at this chart for the first time is whatever the heck happened here um, from October all the way down to uh, December 2018, where Nvidia lost about 55% of its stock price. Now 55% is a lot for any company, it doesn't matter what the industry is. And obviously that's significant enough to shake off a lot of investors. Um, but if we really want to put this into perspective, let's think about how much Nvidia has grown since you know 2016, for example. So between February of 2016 all the way to about September of 2018, which is about two and a half years, Nvidia has increased over 1,000%. To be more specific, about 1,054%. So any kind of stock that has that kind of growth in a two and a half year period is obviously going to show some kind of retracement. It doesn't matter what the core business is. It doesn't really matter what kind of news comes out. It's basically due for something. Uh, obviously, it's really difficult to know when the drop is going to occur. I mean, one thing's for certain, and that's uh, towards the end of 2018, a lot of the entire stock market dropped. So that might have been one signal. But yeah, essentially with Nvidia, um, the, the drop was pretty chaotic. But the other thing I want to highlight um, to also put this into perspective is that it looks like we just came back and retested our 200 week moving average. And it looks like we've been holding this as support this entire time. And now it looks like we want to head a little bit higher. So I have some trading ranges here. And basically since this drop, it looks like we've been in a single trading range um, for about eight months. And basically this is a series of higher lows and lower highs but it looks like we finally broke above it recently and then held the retest and now it looks like Nvidia wants to make a higher high. So clearly once this high is taken out, then the next level of resistance here is the April high of 2019. Once that's taken out, I think it's gonna be pretty difficult for the bears to try to bring this one down again. And if we zoom in a little more, um, you'll notice that the moving averages, particularly the 50 and the 200, on a daily time frame are starting to cross in the right way, which means the faster is crossing above the slower. And then also, um, it looks like they're starting to move in our favor. And so these moving averages are basically slightly lagging indicators to decide what kind of trend we're currently in. And so obviously in this time period right here, when we're in a rocky trend, but in this time period right here, now that the faster has crossed uh, above the slower and they're holding as support, and they're both sloping upwards, it looks like the beginning of a new uptrend. And so with Nvidia, I just placed an order to go long, so it should be executed after the weekend is over. Um, but yeah, feeling good about this one. The next stock on the list is Square. And with Square, you know, obviously we've been showing a lot of volatility over the past few months, but I also want to put this one into perspective. Um, so basically since February of 2016, which is actually the same time period that I picked for the Nvidia comparison, we've gone from about $8 per share all the way uh, to about $100 per share. So that's an increase of about 1100%. So that is massive, massive growth for any kind of company over a two and a half year time period. And so it's only natural that we're gonna get some kind of retracement and that's exactly what we're getting. I highlighted this area of resistance because I think it is pretty significant. Um, it's acted as resistance for about a few months between February to about April of 2019. But once we broke above this, we held the retest and it looks like we want to go a little bit higher. Now, it's not the perfect technical setup like Nvidia is in my opinion. I think there's still a little bit of um, resistance to get over, particularly the 200 day moving average. So it's not necessarily something that I'm buying a lot of but I still like it. And um, basically my stop would be here at um, on December 2018, 
which would be about $50 per share. Um, so I will um, exit my position if we get below this low here. So for the next stock, I'm going to be talking about Caterpillar. And so I also want to put this one into perspective. So between 2016 all the way to about um, January 2018, Caterpillar increased by close to about 200%. And we're currently showing some retrace. Um, let's see how deep we're retracing actually. Um, so it looks like the retracement isn't actually all that deep. Um, we're butting up against the 0.5 area. And um, yeah, for the most part, I like this a lot, especially because when it comes to stocks that continuously increase their dividend yields, you're basically getting a higher dividend yield payment um, for the same price that you would have paid, let's say maybe a couple years ago. So what I mean by that is at the moment, since Caterpillar always increases their dividend yield every single year, and it's been doing so for over 25 years, for the same price that you would have paid two years ago on October 2017, you're getting a much higher starting yield. Now, Caterpillar isn't the highest grower in terms of dividend yield, um, but it's still nice. I mean, it's definitely not the slowest. And so I'm not necessarily trying to bottom fish with Caterpillar. Like I do recognize that there are some levels of resistance to be watching out for. Um, this is basically what I'm taking a look at. And I think once we break above this, then the um, the all time highs shouldn't be too far away. But you know, even if we make a lower low, I wouldn't necessarily be hurt. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if we bottom right here, actually. It looks like we have um, some kind of inverse head and shoulders. And then we also have the um, 200 day, which is um, close to being taken out as resistance. So yeah, I think the growth is gonna be explosive once we get above both of these levels. And so I'm trying to buy as much as I can before then. The dividend yield with Caterpillar is over 3%, which is an awesome starting yield anytime you have a dividend aristocrat. Um, and their PE ratio is actually super awesome as well, which is only 11.1, pretty large company at $72 billion. And as I mentioned with the dividend yield, it's not the fastest grower. I mean, the last dividend increase was actually pretty high. It went from about 86 cents per share all the way to a dollar and three cents per share. Uh, but the previous one wasn't too high, I don't think. So 78 cents and then uh, 77 cents and then uh, let's see, 70 cents. So like I said, not the fastest grower, but definitely not the slowest. Um, and I'm buying as much as, uh, as I can with Caterpillar. The next stock I wanna talk about is 3M, which is actually showing a much more significant um, retracement. So basically from its all time high, we've dropped about you know pretty close to 40%. So it's gone from $260 per share all the way to about $158 per share. Um, and obviously we wanna zoom out a little bit. So the thing with 3M is I think we're in a, you know, still a long-term uptrend. And this is basically the line in the sand in my opinion. Um, so we still have a lot of room to go, um, which would still be considered a bargain for 3M. Um, but let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So doing that same comparison with Caterpillar, basically the last time that we were here at $158 per share was November 2014. And so that's five years ago. So you're able to pay the same amount as you would be five years ago, but the starting yield is actually much higher. And so let's see how much better that starting yield is. So currently 3M is paying $1.44 per share in terms of dividend yield. But here in 2014, they're paying 86 cents per share. So that's nearly a starting yield increase of 70% or more. Um, and you get to pay the same amount of price for that. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Um, PE ratio is pretty decent as well. I think it's pretty cheap right now. Um, they do have a lot of debt. So if you were to take a look at something like their debt to free cash flow ratio, it's actually pretty high. I think it's close to four right now. And four isn't the best. Um, but, you know, the starting yield is pretty high. And I believe in this company in the long run. And obviously they're super diversified. I've talked about their different business segments many times on this channel before. Um, so yeah, I'm really liking 3M as well. The last stock I want to talk about is Johnson & Johnson. And so if we zoom out a little bit, this is a weekly time frame. And so this line represents the 200 week moving average. In my opinion, this is holding as strong support and we've been doing so ever since 2012. And I think as long as we hold above this, then we're ripe for a bounce. But 
I also want to summarize that it doesn't really matter even if we do drop below this area like I'm still gonna be a buyer because it is Johnson Johnson I'm just saying this kind of incentivizes me a little bit more to buy as much as I can because when you have a level that holds as strong support it's so easy to get a bounce and um, even though they're going through a lot of bad news right now I think um, sky is the limit for Johnson Johnson I still think that they have more room to grow they make so many acquisitions all the time, um, but their debt levels are actually pretty manageable. I mean, definitely more manageable than something like 3M. Um, so yeah, I really like this one. And um, the last time we were here at $131 per share was uh, June 2017. So you'd be paying the same price you would have been uh, paying two years ago, but your starting yield is actually a little bit higher. Taking a look at their dividend yield, um, so it's currently close to 3%. If it was 3%, I think um, that'd be one heck of a bargain. Um, but it's currently 2.89%. And their PE ratio is currently uh, pretty much 22. So again, not the biggest bargain um, at the moment compared to the other two stocks. But still, you know, you really can't go wrong with Johnson & Johnson. And when it comes to stocks that are such high quality, it doesn't really matter like if the bargain is great or not, in my opinion. I, I would always consider buying Johnson & Johnson. And that's just kind of the price you have to pay for a really high quality company, which I'm perfectly fine with paying myself. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support recently. Let me know if you guys are buying any of these. In my M1 Finance account, I'm actually buying 3M, Caterpillar, and Johnson & Johnson a lot more now. I've made them more core positions. And on Robinhood, I made an order to buy $1,100 of Nvidia and maybe like $1,300 of Square, I think, which would be executed in a few days. Um, so I'm buying all these stocks that I'm talking about. So I'm not just, you know, talking about stocks and not actually buying them. I'm recommending these because I actually believe in them. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.